Hey guys, right, so we are on site, we're at the job now, and I'm just down in the basement. This is going to be one of the bigger jobs that we need to do. I'm going to be clearing all of the floor, because it's completely filled with crap. I don't know how easy you'll be able to see this, it's filled with the client's stuff. But at the end there, that lintel is the doorway, and this goes beyond the front door. And actually down at the very, very back, just down there, there's a whole load of coal and a little shovel. So this was obviously the old coal chute down at the front there. Uh, and it's now just filled with stuff and junk and whatever else. Uh, and the staircase that was in here to get down here is completely rotten away. Now, I don't know if this was an original staircase for the house. This is a Victorian property in South East London. So I don't know if this was original or not. But what I do know is that the wood that was down here, or the wood that is down here, has basically become soil. I mean, it is just it's going away to a paste there in his soil and wood takes a fair amount of time to rot so having said that this is a fairly new 2x4 and you can see what's happened to this and this is a fairly new piece of 2x4 that's just been left here so I don't know this could be the original um, cellar staircase there's a whole load of old lead piping uh, which has been decommissioned and just dumped there so what I'm going to do is once I've cleared away a lot of this stuff I am just going to build on top of this that's just a concrete pad which is perfect so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off there I'm going to put a header plate under here and I'm just going to have the steps coming all the way down here and so what that will mean is it'll I'll do it inside of here and on top of that there so that staircase will just remain underneath that will give us enough head height to make it to make it through Okay, so from here, obviously we've got this staircase going up this way. The stairs will run from there down to about that point there at an angle. And so for this, I've got this two by nine. So that'll be nice and strong to be able to take the weight. That'll be on one side, a stringer. That'll be a stringer on that side. So there are two of these. And then I've just got these. These are one by eight. And uh, They'll go across as the treads, like that, all the way down. I'll show you how to measure and cut the stringers. Okay, so in theory, this is what will end up happening. This will be slightly shallower angle. That will be flush with the floor. This will be flush here. And you'll step from here to the first step down, and it will be about seven and a half to eight inches down from each, from each step. And so because you know, basically to work out how to build a staircase and what angle to do it at, I think the easiest way is to talk about the rise and the run. And there are a whole load of videos that, that do that better than this. So I'm not going to go into all the maths of doing the rise and the run, but effectively the rise is how high it is from tre one tread to the next tread, multiplied by however many treads you have. Or another way to think about it is from the top step to the bottom step that is the rise that you're that you're taking up and then the run is how far it is from this top step out and then down vertical so that's pretty easy for me to figure out because I've got the top step and I've got the bottom step so all I need to do is measure that angle and Pythagoras has done a lot of work over the years good old Pythagoras to help us figure out how, how long the other sides are so I've measured and I've decided that from this point here down to that point there, allowing for the final tread, it's going to be 2.0 meters. So two meters. Then what I've done is I've set this board up, and because it's a straight piece of wood, I can take the measurement from here down to roughly the same point. And what I'll do is I'll measure on the floor what that point is, so that I know that I'm getting it exactly right. I can measure from this point here down. You know, it's, it's super easy. You just get a piece of string and I've got all three sides so I can then figure out what this angle is. And I, I know obviously this is 90 degrees and so this will be the reciprocal of that. Because all the internal angles on a triangle make 180 degrees and I've got 90 here. So I've got to split 90 degrees between that angle and that angle. It's maths. So that's my mark there measured I've done it to two meters so that whole tape there is two meters long 
from the corner and then just for the sake of interest from that point there straight up 1.54 centimeters so now i'll just do some quick maths and i'll show you what i do i'll do it on here so you can see it and we can figure out how many treads we're going to get that will tell me how long this timber needs to be and it will help me figure out how to cut it right grabbed another timber just to put from there all the way down to my mark here and all I did is I just clamped it with the old third hand there that's basically allowed me to do this that's this is what I'm up to so I know that from the top to the bottom is 1.54 the distance is 1.36 and that there is two meters it's basic maths and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna because I'm not interested in spending my life doing trigonometry I'm gonna go online and just google a right angle triangle calculator and it will give me these angles here, here and here, which I'll get now. So we've got 41.4, 48.6, for all you math magicians, 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, 4 plus 6 is 10, so that equals 90 degrees. 90 plus 90 equals 180, which is perfect. So we know that that is correct, which is really, really good, because all internal angles on a triangle equal 180 degrees. So that's working perfectly. So now I can use that. I can take all of this and I can figure out how many treads I want. And basically what you do is you take the distance and you divide it by the number of treads, number of, number of steps that you want to put in basically. And that's that. So a slightly easier way again, just go on, going online and finding online calculators for a lot of these things. To figure out how many stairs you want in this, obviously, depends on how deep you want this and how high you want that point. And that will figure out the total rise and the total run is fixed in this instance because I've set the distance from there down to there. And that's great. But depending on how high I want each step, and I want it to feel like a normal sized staircase when you walk down it, will dictate how many of these. And you know, I want to have enough tread depth. These are really steep and really shallow steps which makes it very uncomfortable to walk down you kind of feel like you're falling down it and like you're climbing Everest when you're getting back out so I, I, don't, I don't want that I want this sort of natural slope which is much easier to do but depending on how many steps I go for will de we'll decide on on this and vice versa how much I go high and how much I go deep will decide how many stairs I get and that in turn will decide how long this overall stringer is so there's a great website called calculator.net and they have a staircase calculator and they give you options. And so I can now figure out if, you know, I wanted uh, 22 centimeters of rise and run, I'd get six stairs. If I wanted it 19, you know, 20 and 20, then I'd get seven or eight or whatever. So I'm going to spend a bit of time just thinking about that and I'll make a decision and I'll come back to you. Just thought I'd show you the stair calculator on my screen so you can see what I've done. I went down to the comprehensive version and used total run. And then you can put in your dimensions here. So 1.34 meters, 1.56 meters. It is a fixed rise for me here, which is the step height rather than, I want it to tell me the fixed number of steps. We have treads and these are all 2.4 centimeters thick because they're one inch. There are no restrictions on our headroom and it's a standard string amount, which you can see here on the side. Obviously, if you wanted it flush mounted, then you'd click on the right hand side and it would show you that outcome. You then click calculate and it gives you a load of useful information here, namely the number of steps that you want. That's the crucial thing that I wanted to find out here. It also tells you the rise and the run in centimeters or inches. So I know I'm gonna have 20 centimeters of rise for every 19 and a half centimeters or thereabouts, 19.14 centimeters of run. It also shows me the angle. You can see there, 46.25. It's kind of just useful to know if you are using an angle finder. And then this is quite interesting and helpful to, to realize when it talks about the first step, the height of that, that's the, the lowest step. So it assumes going from the bottom up. The rest of them, you always want to have, so if, if it's an uneven depth, that first one is where you lose that unevenness. All the rest of them, you want to have the same height every step that you go down. So that's how you use calculator.net. And this is their stair calculator, which I found really helpful. And I hope that helps you as well. 
Right, online calculations done. It's going to be seven steps. Each of them is going to go up 20 centimeters. And that means the overall length of the stringer from the corner to the corner is going to be 1.992 meters or 109 centimeters and 92 millimeters. And then all you need to do is mark it up and cut it. You kind of mark triangles like that. I'll show you that in a second, you'll see. Right, so I've just finished marking all of this out. I set up my square, made sure this was at a right angle using this speed square. Set one side to 19 and a half, and then I just made sure when I open it up, 19 and a half from the corner into the middle, and then down, and it ends up bang on 20. Go all the way along, mark them, and then I always mark a little X on the bits that I'm cutting out. And I've made sure I've got seven steps here. So that's obviously the first tread. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's the bottom, you know, it hits the floor there. And that will get chopped off to level, to level the floor. So what I'll do is I'll start chopping these out now. I'll take them outside start chopping them up using the circular saw and then I'll show you what it looks like. I've cut this the whole way along. This last bit I'll cut as and when I need to. I'm just going to offer it up first and I'll take each of these little bits out as well with a hand saw or a jigsaw, that's fine. And just in time because it started raining now. So I'm going to head in, offer it up and see how it looks. Right, this is the first stringer. You can see that it's ever so slightly off the ground here and tight there despite being up against that mark simply because it's leaning up against this so it comes out a little bit which is fine I deliberately left this thing long because I wasn't sure exactly where it was going to sit and how so after I've had a look at it and had a spot of lunch I'm going to finish this off and get it all neat and tidied up so I've finished cutting this to length and size pretty much I've left I've left a little bit of extra length on here and a little bit of extra height. Well, no, the height there is right, but this, I might need to chop a bit more off. I've never owned a recip saw, but now would be quite a handy time to have one because I've got to take this whole staircase out. So I'm going to use old fashioned tools, crowbar and a, well, a mini, a mini crowbar and a hand saw and maybe a little jigsaw there. But yeah, this is, needs to come out because the, the angle here, although the staircase comes out over this way, up at this top point it is catching so it's time for that to come out got to be careful of the pipes obviously these pipes are actually resting on that top step there so that will be interesting to see how we get around that but there's enough width between here and here for a staircase without needing to worry overly about taking this out and it may well be that I just leave a little bit of wood on there to butt up against that's no problem so yeah I'll take this out and I'll show you what it looks like So I've notched out a little bit here for these two cables and just obviously I'm going to use this as the template for the next one so I've marked top up there and I've marked the B for the bottom down there but that's now sat nice and flat on here and that goes the whole way up so I'm pleased with that yeah, that's, that's good that works I've left a little ledge here for these these have actually been this clip has been screwed underneath for these pipes so the next stringer will sit just just flush inside of that the step will ride over the top of it so that's fine and then we just carry on down these aren't in the way so they can just stay there there's there's a small amount of storage space under here which is being lost but not a vast amount and the other thing is when I stand on here obviously there'll be a one inch tread as well but when I stand on here 
there's still plenty of head height to the stairs above, which is good. That's actually a shelf. So that, that could come out if it feels a bit too tight. I'm really, really pleased. And that, that calculator.net for the stair treads is really great. I'm very pleased with that. Made life much easier than having to do trigonometry under the stairs. That's the first one done. I'm gonna cut the second one and then string them across. So I've cut the second stringer. This one matches this one here. And what I've done is I've notched out the top here to accommodate two water pipes that run and I've also notched out the top to accommodate some electrical cables. Now what I've done, I've just spent some time chopping these, which are the treads that are going to go across like that. I'll just tidy up the ends in a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to support the underside of the treads with a 2x4 that's going to run across like this from one side to the other and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a 2x4 up underneath here like this so that I can secure the staircase down to the floorboards that are existing. I'll show you what I mean once I've put it together but I'm, I'm basically going to put it together outside we're going to lift it in on its side drop it down put it in place and shove it up You'll see what I mean in a second. So those are all the supports for each of the treads. The other beauty of doing this is it stops it racking this way at all, side to side, helps avoid any twist, keeps it square. Like I said, this bar here I've put like this because the floorboards are gonna lap on top of it running that way. And it gives me something to secure it down through at the top there. So you can see, you can see it's coming together. So we just, slotted this in Warren and I and it is in it's snugged up stepping up it now which is good takes the weight now it is the floor here is not perfectly square to the floor down in the basement so there is a little bit out in this corner and the reciprocal corner and I know that it's the floor that's out because I checked from corner point to corner point and this way and that way on the diagonals is exactly level and exactly the same number so it's the same distance so I know that the floors are out but it's it's minuscule it's like half a centimeter so actually we're pretty good in terms of head height we're fine the whole way up the whole way down it doesn't slip it doesn't slide that is strong and sturdy so now we can get the treads on good morning all it is the next day uh, after we built the staircase yesterday and I'm just doing these treads I thought I'd show you what I've done. So I'm just putting a soft round over on here like this. I'll show you the profile. Like that, just to soften it. If you're walking down barefoot, that'll soften it quite a bit. And I'm just taking off, taking a chamfer off the corners as well, just so it looks a little bit nicer and neater, and I'll run a bit of sandpaper over that as well. Where some of these boards have got a slight curve in them like that obviously this is going to be the top so that the curve gets pushed down as you walk and I'm doing it I'm doing all of these with my block plane rather than using a, a router or an electric router or anything it's kind of 8 30 in the morning it's quiet it's peaceful and calm and nice and stuff and like, it's nice it's nice I'm not, I don't have to plug anything in I don't need earplugs don't need eye, you know, eye protection. It's just it's peaceful and quiet, and it actually doesn't take very long. It takes a couple of minutes, a couple of passes with the plane, and and I'm done. So, 
don't know, let me know in the comments below. Do you, do you like, do you prefer working with hand tools? Um, do you prefer working with electric tools? What do you, what do you find works best for you? Uh, is it situation specific? Let me know, let me know what you think. So this is perfectly sturdy and secure. Very happy with that. What I did, obviously it's had two, um, two nails on the outside of each of them and then I've shot a nail in the front and in the back and in the underside of each of them. So it's very, very secure. Each of these is very sturdy and now I'm gonna be putting the treads on top of each of them. I've just rounded those over as you saw, so that's all fine. But what I'm gonna do first, just to stop this from slipping this way, there's a risk or a chance that as this is stepped on and walked on, it slowly slides down this way. I've just got two little clips here and I'm going to bolt these into the floor. These are exactly the size of a hanger, so I'm gonna bolt these into the floor underneath here, bolt them down and then I'm gonna screw from the inside. I'm not gonna be able to get get a drill in on the on the other side so and there's no other way to do it so I'm just gonna slide these in mark up where they're going to go drill them down into the into this which is a concrete pad and then I'm gonna screw them in and that will hopefully stop any any risk of it slipping this way so I'm fully set up now I've marked on the floor here where I want these brackets to go so I've got to drill two holes one there and there there and there. I've got a range of roll plugs with different sizes, so that's fine. Then I've got these. These these drill bits are really quite good actually. They're very, very strong. So they attach to your impact driver. So they give a lot of torque and they've got very sharp bits as well. So that's great. The only difficulty is it means that when you then come to drive in a screw, you have to take this out, you know, you don't have the benefits of having you drill with one and your impact driver with the other. It's not the end of the world and they're much better drill bits than I've got for a normal chuck. So I'm gonna use them and then take the bit out and swap it over. So these are the bits. This is the little pack that it came in. They've got different ones here. They've got little magnets on them to hold. And they're just, they're really, really good quality bits. Although this one broke, so. Maybe it's not that good quality, but I think I was probably doing too much with it. So they're super good. Now I just got to replace this. So now that's set up, got the roll plugs in, ready to go. Got some screws. That is in super, super sturdy now. That's going nowhere. So now I can, Drop this back on top of it. Drive a screw in from the side. That will run pretty much the entire way through, which is perfect. And that's that. These stairs are secure and good to go and I can just put the treads on top and I'm finished. So these bolts are on. And that is snugged up there. And there is no movement at all in this now. Before there was ever so slight amount of dip there, but there's none. So that's nice and sturdy. And the staircase is complete now. So it goes all the way up. The other thing I've done, so I've just written on here, I'm gonna go over it in Sharpie, but water pipes run this way and the electrical cable runs up there as well, just so that people know. But it's perfectly sturdy and secure, so that is how you build a staircase down into a basement.